By digging through Minecraft's source code, I've uncovered pathfinding exploits that turn one of the game's most frustrating problems, moving mobs, into something you can completely control. I've read through the code of every mob and I've put together some of the most useful exploits you can actually use in survival. Ranging from forcing them to take a particular path, to making monsters completely unwilling to pathfind into your base. In this video, you will learn how mobs think, which will allow you to take control of their behavior and unlock tricks most players don't even know exist. Before we start looking at individual mobs though, let's look at the algorithm that governs them all, A star. Suppose we have a situation like this. A villager in the bottom left corner wants to reach a fletching table in the top right corner. Between them is a barrier, but it doesn't know that yet. Its AI has told it where the fletching table is, but now it must pathfind to it. Starting at the villager, it looks at all adjacent valid spaces. It's trying to pick a good path target, and it does that using this equation. From all the options presented, the algorithm looks for the node with the smallest sum of these two values. The first is the cost so far of the current node. Traveling one block normally costs one, and traveling a diagonal costs about 1.41. This means that choices that take less distance to reach are prioritized. However, this is balanced by the second value known as the heuristic. In Minecraft, this is calculated as the straight line distance to the target destination from the current node. Mojang actually decided to weight this heuristic by 1.5, which makes the algorithm run faster at the cost of not always finding the shortest path, though it's usually pretty close. Here's what that looks like running alongside regular A star. Notice how weighted A-star almost seems to be gunning for the target. While regular A-star is more meticulous, making sure it's considered all the options. Once the path is found, the mob begins moving, following the nodes selected by the algorithm. As we can see, the path followed here is quite close to our expected result, with slight differences being easily attributed to tie selection. Now that we have the fundamentals down, we can talk about some things that make this algorithm abusable, and there are two major things. First, whenever a block updates near the mob's current path, that mob reruns the A star algorithm again with the same destination in mind. This function has a one second cooldown, which means that we can use block updates on one second clocks to exactly sync with the mob's pathfinding updates, and give this villager decision paralysis. Consequentially, this also means any transformative block updates near a large number of mobs could cause a lot more lag than just having the mobs alone. Try to use this knowledge for good rather than evil. The second of these two quirks is what's known as pathfinding malice. Remember earlier when I said that traveling one block costs one to the A star algorithm? Well, it turns out traveling some blocks costs extra, which we can use to manipulate which path gets chosen. Here's a quick list. Honey blocks cost an extra 8 points to traverse. Powdered snow is treated as impassable, as are closed doors, which can lead to some funny moments. All fire blocks have a cost of 16 to traverse, and a cost of 8 just to walk within one block of. However, animals and villagers override this to negative 1 and 16 respectively, where negative 1 means it's impassable. Cacti and sweetberry bushes are impassable, and walking next to them costs 8. Finally, water and walking on blocks next to water adds a cost of 8. Now that we know all of this, we can use it to control and predict which path a mob will take to a target destination. Take this example. The villager has two potential paths to its target. A more direct path with two adjacent magma blocks, or a more roundabout path with three honey blocks. Thanks to what we've learned, we can calculate the cost of the top path like this, which comes out to around 35.82. We can do the same for the bottom path, which comes to a total of 37. This one's pretty close, but the villager will just barely choose to take the top path. Here's another example. If you want to try and figure it out for yourself, go ahead and pause the video before I give the explanation. At first, path A may be tempting due to the lack of obstacles, but remember, walking next to water has a malice of 8. If we add all of those up, and then include the total distance the villager needs to travel, we can do the math to find the total cost of this path to be 69.82. We can do the same thing for the second path, remembering that water also has a malice of 8. Keep in mind that a single malice can't be double counted, 
These blocks aren't doubly next to water, but a block could have multiple different malices. The total for this path is 65.82. The middle path can be ignored in this case, because as we know, fire is impassable to villagers. The fourth path has far fewer malice blocks, however, this magma block is hitting the path in three places, and this honey block gets added on top of the malice from the magma block, bringing the total up to 70.28. For the last path, the cacti and sweetberry bushes all apply a malice of 8, making this path unviable to the villager. The total cost is 90.82. Now that we've calculated all of the costs, we can see that the lowest one, path B, is the one selected by the villager. Interestingly enough, if we do the same test on a zombie, the middle path is chosen since zombies use the base malice for fire. Now that you understand how mobs pathfind to a target, let's look at the different ways you can give them a target in the first place. All hostile mobs are great for this because you can use yourself or any other player as the pathfinding target. This lets you hilariously abuse their pathfinding. I think my favorite example of this is with the creaking. You can make these mobs take highly indirect paths by simply putting some water next to the direct ones. Thanks to this, we can make base entrances like this one that monsters refuse to pathfind into. Thanks to the water here, the zombies always prefer to take the trapped side path. In the same way, wardens will pathfind to any vibration they hear. But they can also pathfind directly to a player if they're angry enough. Making noise around a warden increases its anger level until it switches from targeting disturbances to targeting players directly. While food and breeding can lead animals, I think the easiest method is setting them on fire. They'll run straight to water. You could also manipulate their wandering to get similar results, if you've seen my last video. Finally, jobless villagers search for unclaimed workstations during the day and will path to them from up to 48 blocks away. Employed villagers also return to their workstations at various times throughout the day. Since the occupation status of the workstation is stored within the block itself, we can make any number of villagers congregate to an area by rapidly moving the workstation, which resets its status but not the villagers' current path. Now that you know all of this, you're in control. Use it to build smarter farms, traps, or even just mess with mobs for fun. Now, let's see what you've learned. Here's one last pathfinding puzzle. Drop your answer and explanation in the comments, and I'll pin the best one. Before you go, I just want to say a huge, huge thanks to my Patreon supporters, Melly Chu, Ansel Bridgewater, Dragon Slayer, Inertia Squared, Jewel Rain, and Vetter. Your support genuinely means the world to me, and it helps make videos like this possible for me. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.